Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Aditya from Brainstorm Codings. So in this video, I will create a web server using Node.js which will listen to the request coming from the user's browser and it will also send a response back to the user. So let's get started. I have created a folder and named it as server code and I opened it here in VS code. So by the way, I'll be using VS code for this video and for the upcoming videos as well. So if you are using VS code, then there is a way to open a folder to create a new folder and open it here in VS code. You can see the file option and the open folder option. Just go there, select a folder where you want to create this subfolder and it will open automatically in VS code. So before writing a program, we need to create a file and this file will be server.js so to create a server in node.js uh, we have to use some functions to do that and these functions are part of a specific module which is the http module and in node.js uh, if you want to use any module or if you want to use any function which is a part of a, a specific module uh, we have to import uh, the module first now there is a specific way to uh, do that in node.js first we will create a constant variable and the name of the variable will be same as the name of the module uh, just for our convenience in future and we'll use a function which is require and this function takes one argument uh, which is the name of the module Now to create a server uh, we need to use a function and the name of the function is create server so for accessing that function which is part of the http module we need to use this variable first then the period operator and then we'll use the server function the create server function so this function takes one argument uh, which is a callback function i'll use this arrow function syntax and this arrow function or this callback function takes two arguments the first one will be the request parameter and the second one will be the response parameter and the request parameter will be used to play with the request which is uh, being sent to the server from the browser and the response parameter will be used to send a response back to the browser so th this will be a really simple video uh, I, I won't make it complicated uh, we need we just need to send a response a simple response back to the server so we're using this end function i think uh, this is the simplest way to send a response back to the server and the response will be hello world and this server uh, will listen to uh, listen on port number 3000 and you can choose any port uh, it's your personal choice so so for using this function we will save it in a variable as well and then we'll use this variable and a function so you can see this listen function here we'll use the listen function so the server will start listening on port number uh, the one we specify here so i like the port number 3000 by the way so i'll specify it um, then there is another argument we can also specify uh, the IP address uh, but if you don't specify it then it will automatically by default uh, run on uh, the local host so I, I don't think I need to specify that and this will also take a callback function so whenever the server will start we will get to see a message in our console so uh, this is the console we have so we want to say that server is listening on port 3000 so yeah this is it if i save this program now in order to run any program in node.js uh, there is a command which is we use the node keyword first and then we use the name of the file so if I run this, it will take some time uh, based on your system configuration. 
and whenever the server will start listening we will get to see this message in the console and as you can see we have a message that server has started listening on port 3000 so let's go to the browser and then access this server and send a, send a request and let's see what response we get to see okay so let's send a request to the server we know that the server is running on local host and on port 3000 hit enter yeah all right we have the response hello world as we expected let's see the network tab by the way So let's go to the network tab. Okay, here we are. So if I refresh the page, we get to see that there are two get requests. The first one is for the default path, which is the slash path, because we have not specified any route yet. So we'll do that in later videos. You can see that we have this response 200 OK and we have the request headers as well and some response headers so we can see the content length is 12 we can see the date and this request is for the favor fav icon okay so this is the only thing which matters to us so we have the 200 okay response and the server is finally running now let's try to send a json data let's try that okay so now as we have a server which is running completely fine and sending a response hello world i want to send a different response which will be a json data and to do that first we need to specify the content type for the response so we'll use this response parameter again and we have a specific function which is set header so whenever we want to set a header for the response we use this function now i want to set the content type so i will specify this first and this will be uh, the content type this will be the value for this key content type now i want to send the json data so the content type will be application slash json this is it now as i said this will be uh, the end of the response we are using this end function which is used to send response back to the server and uh, let's see what happens if we set a header after sending a response to the server all right so let's save that let's quit this server first because every time you make a change uh, and you want to uh, make that change happen to the server you have to quit the server first and then uh, restart it again let's restart it okay so server is listening now let's go to the browser and let's see what happens if, if we get an error or the server is just running fine okay so let's see if everything is working fine or not let's refresh this page okay so again we have two get requests and we have the 200 okay response everything looks pretty well by the way but the only thing missing is as you know we have set a header to the response so this is the response headers we have and we don't see the content typed anywhere here now why did that happen and there's again another thing which is going on in the vs code in our console so let's have a look at that so if you see in the console our server is not running and we have got an error now this error says that cannot set headers after they are sent to the client so we have sent a header we have sent a response to the client and then we have set a header for that response so that's completely invalid so that's what i wanted to show you now let's set this header before sending the response 
now in order to create uh, in order to send some json data i will create a, a javascript object let's create this const variable again so this is the javascript object so this contains my name which is aditya my age i'm 21 right now and my channel which is brainstorm codings okay so this is the data we want to send now let's try to send this as it is let's see what happens okay let's save this file restart the server okay it's running fine let's see what happens in the browser so i am in my browser and uh, i will refresh this page and let's see what happens so we get an error here let's see what's happening in net in the network tab so we have the request headers uh, but we don't see the response headers and that means we are definitely sending a request to the server but the server is somehow not responding to our request let's see what's going on in the vs code uh, maybe we get a we get a clue from the console so if you see again the server has stopped listening on port 3000 and we have an error which says the chunk argument must be of type string or an instance of buffer but it received an instance of object so as you can see we have created this javascript object and we send it as it is so for sending the data if you want to send the json data first we have to convert it uh, in the type string so let's convert it let's create a new variable a new constant variable we have this stringify function which converts a javascript object into a string let's pass it here as an argument and now let's send this data variable as a response so i have saved it restart the server let's see what we get okay so let's refresh and we see some changes in here so we get to see that this is the json data we have the raw data as well so this is our object well we converted it into string so this is the json data we have and we have some headers as well so if you have a look at it we have the content type as application slash json we can see the host which is localhost 3000 we can see the date yeah and if we have a look at it here in the localhost we get to see the same thing so we have the content length we have the content type we have the date and all the request headers so this is pretty well actually we get to see it in pretty well manner so this is how we send the json data back to the server as a response whenever we get a request now this is kind of static server because uh, it doesn't uh, verify the routes we haven't applied the routing yet so it doesn't serve the content based on the route which is requested by the user so let's say that we have um, we have an application which contains the home route uh, the login route and the dashboard route so if someone requests the home route so if i do it here if i request the home route i get to see the same response again even if the route has changed even if i requested a different page so we'll do that in the next video i'll show you how to do it so for now i guess this is it but yeah before that i will show you uh, i will explain the functions which we have used in this video which is the create server function and the listen function so let's have a look at it first so this is the function we have used to create the server so if you see 
this const server so this const is a keyword to create a constant variable the server is a variable name then we have this HTTP which is the name of the module we have used and we have extracted some functions uh, so this is the function we have used and uh, this function is part of the HTTP module so obviously this is the function name create server then this request req this is the request parameter and this res is the response parameter and everything uh, which we want to do with the request uh, this goes here so so the create server method includes request and response parameters which are supplied by nodejs and the request object can be used to get information about the current http request so we can get uh, the url uh, we can get the request headers and the data as well uh, which are associated with the request and the response object can be used to send a response for the current http request so the response will be sent based on the request we get so this is how we have used this function and uh, these are the parts such as these are the arguments uh, of this arrow function so that's all for this video in my next few videos i will show how do we manage different routes and how do we serve the html templates as well so thank you so much for watching stay tuned and i'll see you soon